What's up guys, Kplace here. Nothing says change of plans quite like getting up to work on one video and then, surprise, there's completely new Wilds info dropping. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Yep, today we got a look at some of the basic mechanics and an overview of focus mode. On top of that, we're also getting a weapon teaser a day all the way up until Gamescom, starting with Greatsword. Those are what I'm most excited for, since even as a dedicated hunting horn main, I always like seeing all the new toys all the other weapons are getting. The hunting horn video can't come soon enough of course, even though these teasers are coming out a lot sooner than I expected. That's a pretty good sign too, because they usually show weapon gameplay before the hands-on demo becomes available. We already know that we are going to be getting one in Gamescom, but this could mean that the worldwide release isn't too far behind it. Or maybe I'm coping, who knows. In any case though, new info is new info. Let's get into some of what we got today. First off, we got the basic mechanics. We start out with a lot of the usual. You got your sheath and unsheathed action options. Hands free, you can run around at full speed and use items. Weapons out and your movement speed adjusts from weapon to weapon, and you can of course start freely attacking. One thing I noticed here though, and I might be misremembering things from the 5th gen games, but the movement speed while the hunter drinks a potion looks slightly slowed down. You can still move of course, but the potion jog is gone, instead you're just walking. I'm thinking that this may be to make more of a difference between using items on foot and on your mount, which is the next topic in the video. They say here that your sacred can take you to your target monster automatically, which kind of reads like we won't be tracking monsters the old fashioned way anymore. That would be kind of odd if it turns out to be the case, since Wilds is supposed to be one of those more immersive and realistic monster hunter titles like World was. We do see scout flies though, which were used for tracking before, so maybe what we're seeing here is what you get only after you've fully collected all the tracks for a given monster. Once your scout flies and sacred have enough of a scent, they'll be able to pick up on it easier then. When they do this, you'll be able to use items, sharpen, swap to your secondary weapon, and even pick up environmental items as you pass by gathering nodes on your way to the fight. The Slinger will be returning with new mechanics to make this even easier, because we now have a fancy new grappling hook to snatch things up from a distance. What I really like seeing at the end here is that you can use the hook to set off environmental traps. Before, you could sometimes miss that perfect chance to drop rocks on a monster's head or something along those lines if you didn't happen to have ammo on you at the time. But now, that's a thing of the past. There's no mention of the Clutch Claw which means that flint shots may be gone, so wall bangs on demand will have to be replaced with some other way to turn the environment against your target. Next up, we got a more detailed look at focus mode, which is something I've been looking forward to almost as much as the weapon trailers. I've seen a few people worried that the mechanic may be some sort of easy mode lock on type of thing, but fortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. Instead it looks more like a way to trade freedom of movement for more precision. Focus mode stance looks great for making minute positioning changes, like the greatsword adjusting where its charge slasher will land, or snapping up the guard in just the right direction after being tripped from behind to avoid a follow up attack. The sword and shield user was able to zip around the Chattacabra and keep up the offensive with slides and short sidesteps, where you might have had to stop and roll to reposition before. As a hunting horn user, I'm already picturing how useful this could be for landing those wild recital and encore swings exactly where I want to in recital mood, if that comes back of course. It's pretty exciting to know that after making all those wishlist videos a while back that the real deal wild hunting horn is so close to being officially revealed. That aside though, things like this would be nice for smoother control functionality, but focus mode's tricks don't stop there. Wounding is now a natural side effect of just attacking the same body part over time instead of just latching on with your clutch claw. Focus mode will also allow you to light these wounds up for easier aiming, along with any body parts that are naturally really weak hit zones. I can see this leading to more of an intuitive experience for the players who don't like going online to look up hit zones and weaknesses outside of the game. On top of damage numbers, we'll be getting a ton of new info on the fly that we didn't always get out of just playing. And on top of all of that, there are also the new focus strikes. These may be sort of spiritual successors to Rise's Silkbind attacks, in the sense that they're stylish and highly damaging moves that you'll want to be throwing out whenever there's a good opening. We don't know if you'll need to create wounds first before you can access these, but wherever there are wounds, you'll be able to land these for extra damage. I'm sure we're going to be seeing these all over those cool moment montage videos once Wilds releases, as stylish ways to finally hack off a tail or send monsters reeling into a trip or a KO. We get to see a few here for a couple weapons, and I can't wait for more as we get more weapon trailers over the next few weeks. And speaking of those weapons trailers, we're starting off those releases with Greatsword. I've decided that I'm going to switch things up this time around and actually go over all 14 weapons instead of just Hunting Horn, since I'll be watching them all anyway to pick up gameplay details. I don't use the other weapons as much, so I may not be able to figure out all the new details compared to the one I know best, but I don't want to pass up on the other 13, because I'm sure all of you are just as hyped to see those too. Feel free to educate me on your other weapons of choice as I go through them. From what I can gather from the Greatsword teaser though, there's not a ton of new things so far, but what there is new is very interesting. It's looking like they're continuing the trend of giving Greatsword more action to its gameplay than just the usual charge slash sniping. The shoulder tackle makes a return, 
but then there seems to be other counter-attacking tools mixed in as well. Whether this uppercut slash is a true counter or just an extremely well-timed hit, it looks absolutely brutal, and the run-in follow-up slashes make Greatsword look a lot more active and light on its feet than before. Maybe this is taking some cues from Sunbreak's Surge Slash combos. I definitely get that vibe from this move in the Focus Strike, which has you running across the monster with your blade out to slice through multiple wounded spots along the arc of your swing. In contrast to those, this might not be nearly as flashy of a change, but they also seem to want to remind Greatsword users that it can block. This looks really used in serious play, especially after they added the new Shoto Tackle, but from what we see here it's actually getting some functionality besides just a forgotten emergency panic button. From what I can recall about the moveset, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here, you can't just throw out a tackle at any old time without charging or using another attack first. So if the block is any better than before, it'll be a solid defensive tool with focus mode making it a lot quicker to throw up in the right direction. The power clash between the Greatsword Usual and Doshiguma after parrying the two bite attacks is, again, something I expect to see in a ton of montage videos. Hopefully other weapons will get cool cinematic moments like that. If this is what we're getting just to start, I'm pretty optimistic about what we can expect for the rest of the weapons. One a day is going to have one part of the player base or another on the hype train all the way up until Gamescom, which is a much more favorable turn of events compared to the silent anticipation I was expecting before. You guys already know mine, but let me know in the comments what weapons you're most excited to see teased in the upcoming weeks. I'll be working on a few other projects in between teasers, all the while crossing my fingers for a release date for that demo and a full game, so we'll know when we can finally get hands on with all these new toys. Until then though, this has been another K-Plays, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.